So good morning, everyone. So this is a joint work with uh, Kevin Bluto, Chris Bout, and just Leopoldo Catania that you, you saw before. It's about the Markov switching garage package. So just to follow up uh, regarding what Leo did, so with this package, you, you make a lot of money with the Bitcoin, and we hope that with our package, you don't lose the money. So that's motivation number one. More seriously, uh, let's start with the picture. So this is the Swiss market index for a time period in log. And what we try to capture in risk management is the change in volatility. So that's how this time series, this time series wiggle over time. And more precisely, we try to capture what's called volatility clustering. That means that you have buckets of low volatility, so low amplitude in the log returns, followed by blocks of high volatility. And the seminal w uh, model for that, maybe you know it, it's the Garch model, so the general rise autoregressive uh, conditional heteroscedastic model by Boleslav, 1986. So just to introduce the notation, so yt is the log return at time t, it minus one, that's the information set uh, at time t minus one, and we model that through a distribution which has zero mean, conditional variance, which depends on time, and a set of parameters you can imagine for skewness and kurtosis. So what's key in this specification for the log return, this is HT. So that's how the conditional variance evolves. And the Garch model specifies it through a linear model. So very easy. So you have a constant. Then if you have a positive or negative shock in the past, this will have an impact on the variance the next day. And if you are in the high, say, level of volatility, it's likely to remain in the high volatility. So with this very simple framework, you can really account for this volatility clustering. So it has been used a lot in, finan in finance. So the problem with this model is that if you have a change in regime, structural break in the regime uh, behind the model be in the time series, this leads to very poor uh, risk forecasts. So let me give you intuition about that. So in these plots, I've simulated data and I've simulated Garch process. So for the first 250 points in blue, I take this model here, so that's the Garch parameters you have here, and this sum here, 0.9, refers to the con covariance stationarity condition. So in this case, if it's below one, it means that the volatility is not exploding, right? So I simulate, and then I, on purpose, put a, a, a break in the process. This is the second half of the series with another set of parameters. Actually, only the first one is, is changing, again, the condition is satisfied, so the volatility is not exploding in this state. Now I give the data set to someone else without saying that it has been uh, generated with a break, and you estimate it via a single model, single specification, and that's the estimate you would get. So it's above one, meaning that you have an integrated gauge process, and it's likely to bias the forecast. So one way to tackle that is via Markov switching gauge process. So it's more or less the same specification than before, except the red part. And the red part is that the, the log returns at time t now on the, does not only depend on the past information, but on a latent variable, st, which can take a discrete number of states, one, two, three, up to capital K. And given the state it takes, you, have, you are in a state for the conditional variance, and possibly you have another set of parameters for the shape, so skewness and kurtosis, right? So this ST evolves as uh, following a first order Markov chain, and then you need to specify how this HKT evolves. And we take the approach by As, Mitnick, and Paulella, where they basically say that you have kind of parallel evol uh, evolution of the, of the process. So in each state, you have a gauge process, right? And this is a very, very convenient specification because it allows for a easy estimation of this model. And you have inter interpretability of the parameter in each of these states. But what is tricky, it's uh, to implement this, right? And that's what we propose with, with our package. So the core of the package has been, uh, was written in C++ using our CPP. So it's very efficient and it's very fast. Uh, more or less, uh, moreover, we took the inspiration from the Arigarch package uh, for, the, for the call of the functions. So it's really similar. If you are familiar with Arigarch, you can easily use our package. And then we provide methods for simulation, estimation, uh, selection, and forecasting. And that's what I'm gonna show you now. So we have a web page. So this is the link to the web page. You see the web page here. So you have a lot of examples. 
And then we have the vignettes, which is available uh, on SSRN, which describe exactly what I will show you now more in detail. So first, we provide some uh, specification for the variants. So we, uh, you have the usual arch process, gauge process, which is the symmetric one. So positive and negative shock have the same impact on the conditional variants, but also a bunch of asymmetric model, right? Because in finance, usually when you have a negative shock, it implies a larger uh, conditional variance. The next step for the error, we take normal Gaussian GED and the skewed version of these. Right, so very, very flexible specification for single regime and, and, and uh, multiple regime specification. So you can really allow each regime to be different, different to have another specification for the variance and another specification for the, uh, for the errors. And you can constrain them to be the same across regime if you want. So that's the set of methods we provide. So we create specification, the DIC uh, fit uh, via MCMC, maximum likelihood prediction. I mean, that's more or less uh, what you find in, in package for forecasting. So let's start with an example. And here I'm using a two states Markov switching process. So that's the, using a student distribution where the degrees of freedom does not depend on the state. So only the variance equation is changing. And for the both states, this is a student with the same degrees of, uh, of freedom. And I take a, an asymmetric gauge specification in each regime, where you, you have all the parameter which may or may not change, right? So how do you do that in R with our package? You use the create specification. You provide the list for the variance specification, a list for the distribution specification. You indicate the number of states. And then you use the fit ML function to uh, run uh, the optimization. So we initialize, this is important to initialize uh, this optimization. So we do like of a clever layout trick for the EM initialization. Uh, but you could use a more robust optimizer if you want, like if you like genetic uh, optimization, you can use a D-Optim for instance. So with that, then you can use the object to plot, for instance, the smooth probabilities. So that's again here the points, the log returns, and then in red you have the smooth probabilities and the filtered, uh, so the smooth states, sorry, yeah, the smooth probabilities for the states, and here you have the filtered uh, probability. So that's the conditional variance at each time point here. But you could go, if you prefer, you can take a Bayesian framework. Bayesian framework is very convenient because, especially for this type of model, it's difficult to get a good assess, uh, assessment of the uh, standard error for the estimates, where Bayesian framework gives you, in small sample as well, the true uh, posterior distribution. And with the th draw of the posterior, you can basically get any information you want on any nonlinear function of the model parameter. So you specify burning, number of draws, and you use the fit MCMC algorithm. Uh, which is based, so FITMCMC, a function which relies on the adaptive MCMC sampler by Viola. But again, if you like to use, for instance, ADMIT or MITISEM, for instance, which is adaptive mixture of student distribution for efficient estimation of Bayesian models, you can do that. So that's typically the output that you would get with the posterior mean standard deviation, numerical uh, standard errors. And then you have the transition matrix, unconditional uh, probability in each state, uh, blah, blah, blah. So now using the draws, you can have a look at the posterior distribution as well. So this is for two parameter. You see kind of non-elliptical shape in this, in this case, right? So this is not the typical ellipsoid that you would have. So this should be a warning against using normal uh, asymptotic assumption to, to, to do any inference for this model. The, again, as I told you, you can use the posterior draws to pass them into functions. And in this case, this is the unconditional variance for regime one and unconditional variance for regime two to get an approximation of the true posterior distribution for each nonlinear function of the model parameter. And this is not something feasible, easily feasible via a frequentist approach. In this case, you would need to rely on the bootstrap, which is super costly, or you would need the delta method, which is really poor approximation. Here, you are really the exact. So you can see that in regime one, unconditional variance is nine, uh, volatility is 9%. In here, unconditional volatility is 30% in the high volatility states. And you can even draw probabilistic uh, conclusion, like there is a 95% chance that the regime two is more volatile than regime one, for instance. I mean, in risk management, we are taking care of the left tail of the distribution. So what you see here, the light gray, that's for each MCMC draw, 
the left tail of the predictive distribution, so it gives you an assessment about the uncertainty coming from the parameters. How does the uncertainty of the parameter translate into the, vol the, the, the uncertainty in your forecast? If you should you take the value at risk, so a quantile, or the expected shortfall? And so you can compare with the maximum likelihood and the Bayesian framework, which basically is predictive. It aggregates all this uncertainty into a single line, which is the blue one here. Okay, so what you can do as well, you can backtest. Backtest means that you take a sample a part of, the, so you go back in the past, you take a set of uh, data points, you fit the model and you forecast over a certain horizon, and then you move the window again, you refit the model, you forecast, you do that. And you will, uh, so you can easily do that uh, through a loop where you fit by maximum likelihood, for instance, and then you would use the risk function with the output of your fit to compute the value at risk forecast. And what you would get, so that's basically, so we are here actually, so that's the log return in the past, but that's using the really the only the information at a given time point to generate the uh, value at risk forecast that you see in blue for a given Markov switching two state model and in red for another uh, single regime specification, right? So here we are forecasting the left tail, a quantile of the left tail of the log return distribution. Now you can say, you can ask whether this is really relevant to do that. So we did in a companion paper, a very large scale study where we calibrate these models to hundreds of stocks and currencies and indices worldwide to see whether it makes sense to use Markov switching, right? So whether we really get better risk forecast. And the first conclusion is that yes, as a risk manager, you should use Markov switching instead of simple plain vanilla gauge model. We, we clearly see significant and economical benefit from using that. So that's the first conclusion of the paper. And the second conclusion is that you should account for the parameter uncertainty in your forecast. So you should not only do maximum likelihood, but we advise to use a Bayesian framework. And we hope that the package then will help the, the manager to implement this in practice. So the conclusion of this talk, easy. So GARCH are used for volatility models modeling, but they can be biased by structural break, which leads to poor risk forecasts. So you should go Markov switching to account for that, because we show that we improve the risk forecast with Markov switching, and therefore you should, uh, we advise to use the package MS Garch. So please now, your questions. Uh, thank you, David. Um, before we take questions, Andreas, would you mind getting your headset on. Oh, great. Thank you. Questions for David? Yes, there is one here. Hi, I work with a lot of um, economists who do all their financial modeling in Stata. What would be, what should I go and say to them tomorrow? So, you know, to, you know, basically sell that they should try this in R instead. You should sell uh, them the paper we wrote on the large scale study. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Other questions? Okay. Oh, there is another one. Um, did you fit it on only on stock prices or only on assets and not uh, like exchange rates or something or interest, so, ra interest so, rates? So, so there are two papers. In this paper, uh, so the vignette, which explains how the package is working, is based on a SMI. So this is a plain vanilla index, okay. easy to, to calibrate. But on the other paper, we did it for 500 stocks, so maybe less because of filter, uh, we filter the liquidity, so 400 stocks indices, 11 indices, and eight uh, foreign exchange rates. Oh, okay. So it's kind of, I would, that's typical universe uh, portfolio manager would face on a day-to-day -day, uh, business, I think. Thank you. You should try with Bitcoin. Another question? We have some time. Okay, great. David, thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot.